I think the most significant thing about the Titan IV that we have is that it is the only one that you can see anywhere. It's the only one left. It was the last one and uh, it was without a mission and so the museum was able to get it. So you can't go anywhere else and see a Titan IV-B, only here. What ended the program was that they ran out of Titan core vehicles. The Titan family of launch vehicles served for 50 years. It was a really super reliable workhorse of the space launch program and now we rely on other vehicles to do our satellite launching but those Titan vehicles uh, served the Air Force and Civil Space Launch for five decades with tremendous record of success. The important thing for our visitors to take away from looking at the Titan is the idea that the Air Force operates outside of the atmosphere and space launch is one of the real keys to doing that. Getting the vehicles outside of the Earth's atmosphere, getting them to space is critical. We wouldn't have GPS and our terrific communications and reconnaissance satellites and all the rest of it without a heavy space launch capability. And that giant vehicle throwing things the size of a tour bus out of the Earth's atmosphere for the benefit of national security and communications and GPS and all that is something that the Air Force is very good at and has been doing for a lot of years and continues to do. The Titan IV family was launched from two places, from Patrick Air Force Base or Cape Canaveral Air Force Station in Florida and also from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. The reason to have two places to launch from is that California launches were effective for polar orbits, or orbits that, that go across the North Pole and the South Pole. The advantage of that is that as your satellite orbits the Earth this way, the planet turns this way, enabling a reconnaissance satellite to take strip photos of most of the planet as it turns underneath. Other satellites launched from Florida go to the east, out over Europe, and achieve an equatorial type orbit, which is great for communication satellites that are going to be geosynchronous and so on. So being able to launch from two places in two different modes or two different directions uh, gives you the greatest flexibility for whatever your satellite orbit needs are. The help that, that our restoration team got from our uh, colleagues and partners in the Air Force Research Labs Building 65 was absolutely critical to putting the payload fairing together. We don't have a building tall enough to do that. And you can't put those three big long trisectors together in a horizontal fashion. They had to be transitioned to vertical so that they could be hung together and then joined together. Well, that took a little bit of engineering and some planning and, and a lot of AFRL expertise, along with our MUR guys, you know, moving stuff hither and yon and there and back. So uh, those, those two groups uh, of experts work together to design some fixtures, lift the things, put it together, and get it done. We're extremely happy uh, about our work with our AFRL partners. Um, it, it went just great and it achieved a terrific result. We were able to partner with AFRL uh, to help us uh, design the lift and assemble the payload fairing. Uh, we have to work with base civil engineering. They help us with their crane service. We contracted some of the crane service out to orbit uh, to help us put the uh, first three big pieces up, the two solid rocket motors and stage one up. And then we use Maxim to put the payload fairing up in stage two. Whenever we put it on the stands, is it just doesn't just stack up uh, together. We just can't sit the pieces down and they mate. We have to sit them down and then they slide into each other 
and, and that presented a big challenge due to the fact that the stands have this compressible material that tends to grip the pieces. The Titan IV restoration assembly uh, was by far one of the largest projects that uh, restoration has done. Um, and, and it presented some very, very big challenges just because of the size and the weight of it. And, and again, the fact that, that it was never designed to be built or displayed in a horizontal fashion like we've done. So that, that, was, that was a very big challenge to overcome. Well, to finally see this vehicle on display after we've spent so much time and effort on it is, is such a rewarding um, experience. So here we are underneath Titan 4B, like all our visitors will be able to see, National Insignia U.S. Air Force. That is what it's all about. Now we're approaching the, the power end of the vehicle. If you're a fan of rocket power, this is the place for you. This is the business end of the two solid rocket motor upgrades and the LR87 Titan core vehicle engines. That is a tremendous amount of thrust. This vehicle weighed more than two million pounds at launch. And to get that thing flying and throw it out of the atmosphere, it takes this kind of power. And uh, to be able to, to come in here to the end of the gallery and look up and see these things up close, yet they're 10 feet above your head, that is an outstanding view of that powerful, powerful Air Force technology.